we're going to review the anatomy of the knee using a knee arthrogram. But before we get to the arthrogram, I think we should review the anatomy on uh, by x-rays. And so on the left here, we have a frontal view of the knee. And on the right, we have a lateral view of the knee. The major osseous structures are the femur, the patella, the tibia, and the fibula. On the frontal view, we have the femur, the patella hiding here uh, behind the femur, the tibia, and the fibula. And remember that this uh, fibula is located laterally within the leg. So this will be lateral aspect of the film, and this will be the medial aspect of the film. Let's turn our attention to, the, uh, to each bone. And uh, you have the femoral shaft or diaphysis. It widens at the metaphysis, and then anything below that is the epiphysis. On the femur itself, we have the adductor tubercle right here the attachment site for the adductor or uh, adductor magnus. Below that we have the medial epicondyle. You can see the little hump here on the medial aspect. That's the attachment site for ligament. Uh, below that we have the femoral condyle itself, the medial femoral condyle with the articular surface, the lateral femoral condyle with the articular surface, Coming up on the lateral side, we have the epicondyle, this region right here. And then in the middle, we have the intercondylar fossa. Intercondylar fossa. Now for the tibia, we have uh, the lateral and the medial articular surfaces. Uh, we call these the uh, plateaus of the uh, this region called the plateaus of the tibia, the lateral and medial plateaus. In between the tibial plateaus, we have the intercondylar eminence, also known as the tibial spine, which is these uh, two mountains kind of the stick up between the uh, condyles. And it consists of the medial and then the uh, lateral intercondylar tubercles. On the lateral view, we can see the tibial tuberosity here which is the attachment site for the patellar tendon. And then superiorly from the patella, we have the insertion site of the quadriceps tendons. Lastly, we have the fibula with the fibular head, the fibular neck, and then uh, the fibular shaft. Next, we stick a needle in the knee joint and inject iodinated contrast and then perform a CT and uh, that CT can be reformatted in the axial and coronal plane. Here is the knee arthrogram CT. On the left we have the coronal reformat and on the right we have the sagittal reformat. And because this is a CT again it's based on density you can see that the fat is dark, muscles are gray intermediate bone is going to be bright due to the high density and then contrast which contains iodine uh, is going to be bright so anything outside of the bone that's bright is going to be contrast injected into the knee joint see that here in the coronal and here in the sagittal uh, reformat and what that does it, it highlights the uh, joint space and uh, anything next to it in the joint space here is going to be articular cartilage here on the uh, femur itself and then on the tibia and then a little bit of joint fluid or in this case contrast in between them. So first of all let's take a look at the osseous structures. We'll start with the femur. Again we have the femoral shaft, the metaphysis and then the epiphysis below that. Starting along the medial aspect. So first of all, we know it's medial because it's the right knee and we're looking at it from uh, as we're looking from the patient from the front. But the easiest way otherwise is to scroll and find the fibula. And here is the fibula and we know that it's located laterally. So then this must be the medial side. So uh, on the femur we have the adductor tubercle, this little notch 
right here, or I'm sorry, this little projection right here, uh, with the adductor magnus tendon inserts. You can see that tendon coming down and inserting on it right here. Just below that, we have the epicondyle, and this little projection right here is where the ligament, uh, the, the medial collateral ligament, uh, attaches. And you can see part of that ligament right here. Below that, we have the femoral condyle with the articular surface inferiorly. Then we have, so that's the medial, then we have the lateral femoral condyle. And then as we go up from that, we have the lateral epicondyle, which is where the lateral collateral ligament attaches uh, superiorly. And again, the lateral collateral is also known as the uh, fibular collateral ligament and the medial as the tibial collateral ligament. We have the intercondylar fossa here of the femur. Next we'll turn our attention to the tibia. We have the articular surfaces laterally and medial and uh, those uh, areas are known as the uh, plateaus, so the lateral and the medial tibial plateaus. In the center here we have the intercondylar eminence, which is this uh, mountain-like projection, which can be subdivided into the lateral and the medial intercondylar tubercles uh, that originates or are part of the intercondylar eminence. Lastly is the tibial tuberosity, best seen on the sagittal uh, reformat here. And so here's the tibial tubercle with the attachment of the patellar tendon. The fibula located laterally has the fibular head, the fibular neck, and then of course the, the shaft of the fibula. Next I want to show you the menisci. Now the menisci are complex structures. Uh, they're C-shaped and located both in the medial and lateral aspect of the joint space and we therefore have a medial and a lateral meniscus. Um, so let's look at it here in the lateral aspect of the knee. And so the meniscus is going to uh, be located between the articular cartilage here of the femur and of the tibia. And here it is. Here's the meniscus. It has uh, kind of low density, uh, somewhere in between uh, fat and that of muscle. And uh, here in the uh, coronal plane, uh, we see it uh, out laterally, we see it kind of as a, um, a rectangle, but as we scroll more medially, you'll notice that the meniscus is going to be uh, deficient here in the center, but now we see it uh, laterally and medially within the knee, and that's because it's C-shaped. Um, now if we scroll on the sagittal image here, when we're out laterally, we can see uh, that it's again kind of a rectangle, it's solid. And then as we scroll uh, more medially, it separates into two uh, wedge-shaped uh, areas. And those are the each limb of the meniscus as they go around. And so here it is, and then attaching. And then on the other side, coming from lateral, going here and that's the normal kind of uh, configuration of the meniscus, this triangular uh, shape. An MRI makes it a lot easier to see the menisci apart from the other uh, tissues around it. And this patient had an MRI of the left knee, so the other side, and I just want to highlight uh, what the menisci looks like. And uh, so here we have the coronal on the left and on the right we have the sagittal uh, knee MRI and uh, this is a fat saturated sequence so fat's going to be dark and fluid is going to be bright and then soft tissues uh, somewhere in between and here we can see the meniscus now we're out um, way laterally in the knee and uh, uh, here posteriorly 
we can see uh, the dark aspect here and that's the uh, meniscus which is uh, solid here and as we scroll uh, medially you'll see that the meniscus comes apart and now you have part of the C on each end here posteriorly and anteriorly and uh, the meniscus uh, attaches here into the tibia and then posteriorly you have this normal triangular shape of the meniscus as you scroll uh, medially and we see the same similar thing here on the coronal um, and as we scroll coming starting posteriorly we can see the meniscus here is dark dark meniscus and then uh, here laterally uh, we see the meniscus in its normal kind of triangular shape okay and the same or very similar thing happens on the medial side here's the medial meniscus uh, located within the joint space medial meniscus and then as we go posteriorly it comes together uh, to form the complete C so both C shaped and kind of complex anatomy uh, within the knee the last thing we're going to look at uh, are the ACL and the PCL, so the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. So the anterior cruciate ligament originates deep within the notch of the, uh, uh, of the femur, so the femoral notch, and then courses um, anteriorly to insert on the tibia. And uh, the ligament here is gray uh, in appearance. Uh, in density and uh, see it outlined here with a little bit of uh, contrast in the joint space and so here is the ligament running from posteriorly to anteriorly uh, on the coronal view it runs uh, uh, from deep within the notch and as you scroll anteriorly it comes down along the medial aspect of the uh, condylar eminence here and so remember the ACL uh, the anterior cruciate ligament prevents the knee from um, subluxing anteriorly. Okay, so ACL prevents the tibia from moving anteriorly. Now the PCL is going to be located just slightly more lateral within the knee. Uh, originates from the lateral aspect, uh, kind of lateral anterior aspect of the uh, notch and uh, we see it well here in the sagittal plane it fans out backwards and inserts on the back of the tibia more laterally than the ACL and it prevents the tibia from uh, subluxing posteriorly okay so PCL prevents the, the tibia from going posteriorly um, and we can see it right here within the uh, notch and as we scroll uh, backwards, we see it going inferiorly down through the knee joint and then inserting here in the back uh, of the tibia. So for reference and in case you have trouble seeing the uh, structures on CT, I just wanted to highlight the ACL and the PCL on this MRI in a different patient. And so uh, here is the patella, the femur, the tibia and uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the ACL so uh, on this sequence and most sequences uh, the ligaments are going to be dark and so here's the ACL going from deep within the notch in the center and then extending anteriorly to insert on the uh, tibia next uh, is the PCL and so we have to scroll a little laterally and here's the PCL and you can see it projects posteriorly from the uh, more lateral aspect of the notch and inserts here on the back of the tibia again preventing the tibia to move too far posteriorly.